So I'm in the shop today working on the Honda. Um, I had a bunch of things to do. Local pull apart yard had a, a discount day, 40% off. So I got some rear disc brakes to put on there, but that's actually not what I'm filming today because doing a rear disc conversion on a, on a Honda, there's like a thousand pages about it. Uh, what I'm actually doing is doing bushings. Um, and I forget if I saw uh, something on the internet that, that kind of uh, triggered this idea in my head. Um, if somebody else had done it, but I know that the couple of times I've done it for other people, everybody's, no one's ever seen it before. Um, and it's really simple. It does not require any crazy tools or whatnot. Uh, trying to press them out is a pain in the butt. Even if you go to Harbor Freight and buy a cheap press, uh, the big challenge then is having the correct dies. Now, if you have a factory service manual, they'll actually tell you what size and shape and everything like that, but then you gotta have a lathe and turn them down. And, Maybe you can use sockets. It's just a pain in the butt. Uh, and then there's the brave souls that burn these suckers out, which is extremely dangerous. Not just a fire hazard, but uh, the melting rubber uh, is really bad for you. And I imagine in some areas they'll get environmental police come around and get you for that. Um, but I came up, or, or, or what I do is I use a hole saw bit. And I just find the correct sizes for them. Um, I got a I got a couple of them, big, small. Um, you drill the core out, and then you either use a, a sawzall. If the sawzall blade is too big to fit in there, I use a, a my jigsaw with a metal a bimetal blade on it, and then cut the sleeve out and, and just piece of cake. Uh, I, I did my entire Z32 this way, um, but that was already done way back before I started making some videos. So I have no videos of that, and it's been a while since I've done any bushings. And I was like, you know what? I, I need to make a video for this and show people how to do it. Um, just put it out there because uh, this this works really really well I've done huge subframe bushings the Z32 subframe bushings which are like that big around all the way down to really really small ones uh, it's always worked um, and it's all you need you do need a heavy-duty drill not just a regular old like uh, you know you know I mean that's an impact but you know just a little little drill like that that that's not gonna cut it uh, it will burn it up you, you need a heavy duty something that's like probably designed for cutting through concrete um, and attack it from both sides because all you're trying to do is drill the core out uh, to get it out this one's almost falling out this is the whole reason I'm doing it is because this bushing is completely just wasted and it makes the, the Honda uh, shimmy on the freeway at like 65 miles an hour um, but that's how I do it I'm gonna go ahead and, and start doing it and uh, I'll try to catch a little bit of each phase of it This one has almost completely come loose, but usually I'll flip it over and I'll come at it from the other side. Um, these uh, these bits will get stuck in the rubber. I mean, I'm not talking about this getting stuck in there. They have these slots in them. You just kind of put a screwdriver in it and, and press it out. Um, but they will get stuck down in there, and that's why I attack it from both sides. Um, and just let it let it. Let it eat the rubber. You're not just trying to drill through it. You got to let it eat the rubber a bit. Um, but you see, uh, it's out. Um, and then I just get, this one's really small, so I'm going to use my, uh, my jigsaw. And I'll just cut the band. You see the inner uh, uh, brain fart. Anyway, uh, just cut through that. You got to do it slowly. I'll actually usually do it going in to a, a heavier, chunkier part of it. Um, because if I start cutting, if you start cutting into that, uh, you're gonna create a stress point and I'd rather have it here where there's more meat. Um, on stamp control arms, if, if you get carried away, you can always weld it up, grind it up, clean it up. Uh, this is a cast, cast one, um, so I'm not too worried about it. Uh, but just take your time and just cut that sleeve, uh, clean it, and then you're ready to press in the new bushing. Actually ended up getting out the uh, the butter knife because I didn't have the correct metal blades for my jigsaw. 
but I'm pretty sure I'm all the way through the band. We're really close. Try not to get too carried away with the cutting. Just nibble at it. Getting it even is a pain in the butt. Once you get through, it's usually really easy to get it the rest of the way out. It just takes a little bit of patience. Now that I've cut through it, you can see it's starting to move. So I'm just going to hammer it out the rest of the way. Hopefully my vise and table don't give too much. A lot easier if I had a proper cold chisel. I think it's hitting the edge of the vise. You get to clamp down properly. Just like that. And I, I barely, barely cut into the actual control arm. I like just barely, you can just barely see the, the chatter marks in the teeth. It's ready to press in the new bushing. And I use my vise for that too. So polyurethane bushings are probably one of my absolute favorite upgrades to do. I, I just absolutely love the things. That was one of the first major upgrades I did to my Z. The only other suspension modification that my Z has is uh, coilovers, which the coilovers are honestly too stiff. They're the reason my, my Z rides kind of stiff, but it actually rides really comfortable in all actuality. It takes bumps fairly well. These control, are, uh, these bushings are not energy suspension. They're actually a, uh, an off-brand because the Honda is not worthy of such great parts. I know everybody's gonna call me a Honda hater now, but this bushing was absolutely shot and I had to do something. They really need a bit of a lip on them. get them in there I might try to press the device but the key to making them not squeak is to loop everything including like that face right there my uh, the bushings on my Z do not squeak at all I don't, I don't know where people get that issue with so the other important part to lube up is the, uh, the inner part where the rod rides because some of these the way they're designed is that the rod will actually pivot and turn inside the bushing. It has all these uh, ribs in here. And then you also gotta get it on the face here. I know it gets everywhere and it's not pretty and this, that, and that, but that, that is the key. It helps them not bind either. Because you can actually crank these down and tighten them up. If they're lubed, they will not bond. Even though these are off-brand, I am actually using the extra tubs of energy suspension lube that I've got because I like it better than whatever came with these. The stuff it is. And a vise is, I've always, if I've had a, most of the time the bushings will go right in uh, without much fuss. These were actually kind of hard. Uh, but the, the vise makes a piece of cake. If I do have one that's a, a little bit of a 
pain in the butt. And uh, that is how I do bushings. Like I said, I just I schmoo the the lube everywhere. That's the key to keeping them from binding, from wearing out, or anything like that. They just everywhere, everywhere, and everywhere, everywhere. There's a reason this stuff is really, really thick, like it is, and it's it's to prevent that kind of problem. So that is how I do bushings. Like I said, I can do it. I did my entire V that way. I do the dots in that way. Um, although most of the dots is bushings, you don't have to cut and splice. But the ones that I do, that's how I do it. And it works fantastic.